We're going to talk about transfusion and the initial workup in ordering a transfusion. And why is that important to me? Well, I'm a hematologist and hematologists should know about transfusion things. But also, you know, many of our patients ultimately get transfused and many of us physicians are ordering blood all the time. And it's important to know what is it about the process that allows you to safely transfuse a patient. Okay, there are three pieces to evaluating a patient for transfusion that take place with each patient really every time, or at least they should, they need to. And these three are first, the type, two, the screen, and three, the cross match. Again, that's the type, the screen, and the cross match. And one of the things we think about, especially in the inpatient setting, is the type and screen. We will always say, patient needs a type and screen. Is a patient typed and screened? Does a patient have an active type and screen? So we're always talking about type and screen all the time. But what does it mean to get a type and screen? All right, let's demystify that a little bit. So the first piece is the type. And the type is really, what is the ABORH type? So there are many blood group antigen systems. And if you look at a prior episode, I've talked about the blood group antigens, but there are many blood group antigens. But the most clinically significant blood group antigen system is the ABO and the RH. And ABO has to do with whether you're blood type A, blood type AB, blood type B, or blood type O. Okay, so the type is about figuring out the patient's ABO. And we also look at the RH as well because the second most significant blood typing system is the RH. So first is the ABO, second is the RH. They are the most clinically significant as far as significant reactions happening when blood is not perfectly matched, okay? So the type is to first of all discover what is this patient's ABO blood group and are they RH positive or negative? That is the type. It's a starting point of all transfusions. And even if you knew what the type was 30 days ago, really in general, we tend to repeat these types every third day. And people ask me all the time, they're like, Dr. Wemina, why? The patient has been in the hospital. Why three days later do we need to repeat the type and screen? And I will tell you that really it's for safety reasons. But one thing that does happen is that in any given hospital, there are patients undergoing transplant in many, many hospitals. And so some of these patients who are undergoing ABO incompatible transplants are actually transitioning from one blood type to another. So there are patients who have a new blood type depending on their underlying disorder or their underlying treatment. For that reason, it's safe to just type everybody all the time, no questions asked, and that's what we tend to do. There are two ways in which we type people. We do a forward typing where we take the patient's cells and we react them against known plasma to see what the reaction is to decide whether it's ABO or RH. The reverse typing is where we take the patient's plasma and we react it against known red cells to determine the patient's blood type. And that is the first step, the type. The second step is the screen. And so in the screen, what are we looking for? We're just looking for if there are any antibodies that come up. And so we take the patient's red cells and we react them against known antibodies and see if there's a reaction. But what we also could do is we could take the patient's plasma and then react them against red cells to see if there are any antibodies, any reaction that shows up. So it's kind of like a very general screen for the most part. You are just reacting red cells and plasma. And you're seeing if there are any reactions. If you get a reaction, then you would do additional testing to figure out what antibodies are showing up. Now the screen really allows you to look at the other blood group systems, right? I told you that the type is about the ABO and the RH blood group. The screen is about the, what we call minor, and not always minor for some, but what we call the minor blood group antigens that may be reacting in the patient. So the patient may have preformed antibodies against the red cells that you're going to transfuse, and you want to know that up front. That's why you take the patient's plasma and you react it with known red cells and see if there's a reaction. Now, for patients who have never had a prior transfusion and have a negative type in screen, they may not need additional testing, but in patients who've been previously pregnant, have been previously transfused, or they've had a transplant, or they have a history of multiple transfusion, you wouldn't necessarily stop at the screen and feel reassured 
you do an extended workup to make sure that you're not missing in anybody that is quiescent. And this can happen, especially in patients who have sickle cell disease, where they form a new antibody. And then over time, the antibody dies down and is quiet. It's still present. There is an anamnestic response. That means there is a recall that will happen if the patient is ever exposed to that antigen again. But when you do the screen, it turns out negative. So you don't always want to be reassured by a negative screen unless the patient has had no prior history of transfusion, no prior history of pregnancy. Okay, or no prior history of transplant. All right, so that's the screen. The screen is just taking the patient's plasma, reacting it against known red cells and seeing if there's a reaction and then doing further workup to figure out, okay, what other blood group antigen systems are involved in this patient's reaction? All right, that's step two. First is the type, second is the screen. Third is the cross match. The cross match must happen when a patient is going to get blood. When they're going to get red blood cells transfused, the cross match has to happen. So the type and screen should always happen as long as you're thinking about transfusion. But the moment you're like, I'm identifying these units for transfusion, you need the cross match. And what is the cross match? The cross match is where you take the patient's plasma and you react it against the red cells you're going to transfuse. You get an aliquot of the red cells and you react it with the patient's plasma and you see is there a reaction. Okay, that is the cross match. You're saying, we're about to commit you to these units are you having any trouble with it? And you're looking to see if there's any reaction to these specific units. That's the cross match. Now, that's historically the way the cross match has been done. I will tell you that now, really, there are so many, many, many more techniques to get a better cross match. And sometimes there's electronic cross matches that will happen as well, where the phenotype, of, where the, the genotype or the phenotype of the red cell units to be transfused is really well known and matched against the patient's known red cell phenotype. But there you have it. Anytime a transfusion is going to happen, you type, you screen, you cross match. All right. Thanks for listening. It's good to talk to you. I'll talk to you again next time.